What could possibly lead a man of the law to commit the most heinous crime of all? In the far reaches of Nome, Alaska, a story unfolds that chills the bone, a tale of beauty and betrayal, of a life taken too soon. The story of Sonia Ivanov, a former beauty queen and basketball player whose life was brutally extinguished. The man behind this shocking crime? Matthew Clay Owens, an ex-police officer, a man who swore to protect and serve, now guilty of the ultimate betrayal. Join us as we unravel the chilling tale of Sonia Ivanov's murder. Sonia Ivanov, a native Alaskan, a former basketball player, and a beauty queen, a life full of potential cut short. Sonia was not just a statistic, not just another name in the annals of crime. She was a vibrant young woman who had so much to offer to the world. Born and brought up in Nome, Alaska, Sonia was a native Alaskan, deeply proud of her heritage. She was a beacon of hope and pride for her community. Sonia was a woman of many talents. She was a remarkable basketball player, her name etched in the annals of her high school's sports history. Her agile moves on the court were a sight to behold, and her sportsmanship was something that her teammates admired. But Sonia was not just about sports. She was a beauty queen, a title she wore with humility and grace. Her beauty not just skin deep, she was known for her kind heart and warm smile. Her radiant personality was a magnet that drew people towards her. Sonia was also a shining star in her academics. She was a bright student with a promising future ahead. Her teachers often spoke of her eagerness to learn, her curiosity that knew no bounds, and her determination to succeed. But all these dreams, all these potential were cut short. Sonia was brutally murdered in August 2003. Her loss sent shockwaves through the community. A young life full of promise was snuffed out in its prime. The impact was far-reaching, the pain palpable. Her friends, family, and the entire community mourned the loss of a remarkable young woman. The town of Nome, already shrouded in a history of mysterious disappearances, was once again faced with a tragedy that left them grappling for answers. But the question remains, who would want to harm such a vibrant young woman? August 2003, Sonia Ivanov mysteriously vanishes from Nome, Alaska. Sonia, a young woman in the prime of her life, a former basketball player, a beauty queen, a native Alaskan, suddenly disappeared. It was as if she had stepped into thin air, leaving behind a community in shock and a family in despair. The initial hours following Sonia's disappearance were a whirlwind of confusion and worry. The local authorities were alerted, and the close-knit community of Nome was on high alert. Friends, family, and neighbors joined forces, combing through every inch of the town, their hearts heavy with dread, but spurred on by the faint glimmer of hope that they might find Sonia safe and sound. As the hours turned into a day and then another, the sense of unease grew. The community, which was usually so quiet and peaceful, was now filled with a palpable tension. The local law enforcement worked around the clock, following every lead, no matter how small. They were met with a wall of silence, a town holding its breath, waiting for news of their beloved Sonia. The search team spread out, pushing further into the surrounding wilderness. Nome, known for its harsh weather conditions and vast, unforgiving landscapes, was not an easy place to search. The teams faced the constant threat of sudden storms, freezing temperatures, and the knowledge that with every passing minute, the chances of finding Sonia alive were diminishing. News of Sonia's disappearance reached far beyond the boundaries of Nome. The entire state of Alaska and soon the whole country was captivated by Sonia's story. As the search intensified, so too did the media scrutiny. The eyes of the nation were on Nome, waiting, hoping for a breakthrough. In the midst of all this, the people who knew Sonia best were left grappling with a horrifying reality. Sonia, who was known for her vivacious spirit and unwavering positivity, was missing. And with each passing moment, the situation looked more and more grim. Two days after Sonia's disappearance, the worst fears were confirmed. Sonia's body was found in a gravel pit, a gunshot wound marking the end of her vibrant life. The news sent shockwaves through the community, the state, the nation. The hopeful search for a missing person had turned into the search for a killer. Two days later, Sonia's body was found in a gravel pit. The nightmare was just beginning. With the discovery of Sonia's body, a murder investigation was launched. The quiet town of Nome, Alaska was shaken to its core, its tranquility shattered by a crime that was as brutal as it was unexpected. Sonia, a native Alaskan, former basketball player and beauty queen, was found in a gravel pit, her life cut short by a gunshot wound. It was a tragic end to a life that held so much promise. The initial findings of the investigation were grim. 
Sonia's body bore the signs of a violent struggle. The gunshot wound, the ultimate cause of her death, spoke volumes about the ferocity of the attack. It was clear that this was no ordinary crime. The brutality of it suggested a deep-seated rage, a personal vendetta. As investigators delved deeper into the case, one name began to emerge from the shadows. Matthew Owens, an ex-police officer. Owens was no stranger to the law enforcement community, he was one of their own, a man who had once pledged to protect and serve his community. But now, he was a person of interest in a murder investigation. Owens was implicated in the murder after failing a polygraph test, but that was just the beginning. He was later found burning evidence related to the case. It was a damning act, one that painted a picture of guilt. The man who had once upheld the law was now suspected of breaking it in the most heinous way possible. But why would Owens, a respected member of the police force, risk everything? Why would he descend into such a dark abyss? These were the questions that haunted the minds of the investigators. As they dug deeper into the case, they found themselves grappling with a chilling reality. The protector had become the predator. The investigation was a race against time. Every passing moment was critical. With each piece of evidence, the jigsaw puzzle of Sonia's murder was slowly coming together. But the picture it was painting was a disturbing one. A tale of obsession, of a twisted desire that had led to a tragic end. The evidence was mounting, and all signs were pointing to one man. Matthew Owens. Matthew Clay Owens, a former police officer, now a prime suspect in a murder case. In the small town of Nome, Alaska, Matthew Owens was a familiar face. He was not just a resident, but a protector, a police officer. Owens, a man of law, was known for his dedication to his job. He was a public servant, a guardian of peace, somebody people could rely on. However, his life was about to take a dark turn, one that would alter the perception of him forever. Owens crossed paths with Sonia Ivanov, a native Alaskan, a former basketball player, and a beauty queen. Their lives intertwined in the most tragic way, leading to a mystery that shook the community. Sonia's disappearance raised many questions and Owens, instead of solving the mystery, became the center of it. Owens was initially cooperative with the investigation, but his behavior soon started raising red flags. As a police officer, he knew the procedures, the questions that would be asked, but his answers didn't add up. His alibi was shaky at best, his demeanor uncharacteristically nervous. And then, the biggest blow to his credibility came when he failed a polygraph test. The polygraph, commonly known as a lie detector, measures physiological responses to questions. While not always 100% accurate, it's often used as a tool to gauge a suspect's truthfulness. Owens, who had been trained to remain calm under pressure, failed this test. His pulse raced, his palms sweated, his breathing pattern changed. These signs of stress and anxiety painted a picture of guilt. But the nail in the coffin was when Owens was caught in the act of burning evidence. This act of desperation signaled his guilt. It was as if he was trying to erase his connection to Sonia, to wipe away the proof of his involvement in her disappearance. But this move only served to make him more suspicious. It was a shocking revelation. A man who was supposed to uphold the law, to protect and serve, was now the prime suspect in a gruesome murder case. His colleagues, the people who had worked side by side with him, were now tasked with investigating him. The community he had sworn to protect was now living in fear of him, but what could drive a man sworn to protect to commit such an atrocity? This question has haunted many. Was it a moment of madness, a lapse of judgment, or something more sinister? This question remains the center of countless debates and discussions. As we delve deeper into this case, we must remember that even those who are sworn to uphold the law are not above it. The evidence was irrefutable, and Matthew Owens was put on trial for first-degree murder. As the gavel struck, signifying the beginning of the court proceedings, the atmosphere was thick with tension. The prosecution had a mountain of evidence against Owens, and the defense had an uphill battle to fight. The trial was a spectacle, with the prosecution presenting a compelling case against Owens, bolstered by a wealth of evidence. They meticulously laid out the sequence of events leading up to Sonia's disappearance and subsequent death. They presented the damning physical evidence, the gun, the burnt remnants of Sonia's belongings. They brought forth the results of the polygraph test that Owens had failed, casting a dark shadow of guilt upon him. Witness testimonies provided further support to the prosecution's case. People who had seen Owens with Sonia on the night of her disappearance 
those who had noticed his strange behavior in the days following, all painted a telling picture of a man consumed by guilt. The prosecution's case was strong, compelling, and seemingly insurmountable. On the other side, the defense tried their best to poke holes in the prosecution's narrative. They questioned the validity of the polygraph test, arguing it was not a foolproof method of determining guilt. They attempted to discredit the witnesses, suggesting they possessed personal biases that may have clouded their judgment. Owens himself maintained his innocence throughout the trial, but his words fell on skeptical ears. As the trial progressed, it became clear that the scales of justice were tipping heavily in favor of the prosecution. The defense's attempts to sow seeds of doubt were largely unsuccessful, and the weight of the evidence against Owens was simply too heavy. After the verdict was reached, Owens tried to appeal his conviction. He maintained his innocence, insisting that he had been wrongly accused. However, his appeals were unsuccessful. The court stood by its decision, confident in the strength of the evidence that had been presented during the trial. And so, the gavel struck once more, this time marking the end of the trial. In December 2005, Matthew Owens was sentenced to 101 years in prison. The sentence was a fitting conclusion to a case that had shocked the community, a stern reminder of the consequences of such heinous actions. The courtroom echoed with a collective sigh of relief while Owens was led away, his fate sealed by his own destructive actions. Matthew Owens, a man who had sworn to uphold the law, was now a convicted murderer. The weight of this statement is staggering, the irony is profound, and the sadness overwhelming. A man given the responsibility to protect his community had instead become its worst nightmare. We reflect on the case that shook Nome, Alaska, a quiet town otherwise known for its harsh weather and the mysterious disappearances that have plagued it over the years. But in the summer of 2003, it wasn't the biting cold or the heavy snowfall that brought tragedy. No, it was one of their own. The loss of Sonia Ivanov, a proud native Alaskan, a talented basketball player, a beauty queen, sent ripples of sorrow across the community. A young woman in the prime of her life, full of dreams and aspirations, snuffed out in a senseless act of violence. The gravel pit where her body was found became a chilling reminder of the fragility of life and the evil that men do. And then there's Matthew Owens, a former police officer, a man of authority and respect, now a symbol of betrayal. His actions not only ended a life, but they also shattered the trust of a community. His conviction and subsequent sentencing to 101 years in prison were a small consolation to a town that had lost one of its own in such a brutal manner. But perhaps the most baffling part of this tragic story is the motive. What drives a man to such extremes? What makes a person, entrusted with maintaining law and order, turn to the very crime he is supposed to prevent? It's a puzzling question, one that has puzzled criminologists and psychologists for years. Matthew Owens had a respectable career, a position of power, a life that many would envy. Yet he chose to risk it all for sexual gratification, for a moment of pleasure that turned into a lifetime of regret. He was unable to accept that Sonia Ivanov did not share his feelings or his desires. Instead of respecting her wishes, he chose to act on his impulses with disastrous consequences. His actions have left a permanent scar on the community. A reminder of the potential evil that lurks in the most unexpected of places. A reminder that even those sworn to protect us can sometimes become the very monsters they are supposed to shield us from. But one question remains, why would Matthew Owens risk his career for sexual gratification? We invite you to share your thoughts in the comments below.